In this lecture, we will talk about calculations of fluid shifts and osmolarities after infusion of hypertonic saline. What happens to the fluid, how the fluid shifts from one compartment to the other compartment and how the osmolarities of different fluid compartments in the human body changes when hypertonic saline is infused. So, calculation of fluid shifts and osmolarities after infusion of hypertonic saline. In this experiment, we will basically infuse a person with hypertonic saline, in this case with 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride and then we will see that how the intracellular fluid volume and the extracellular fluid volume changes. Now, before starting the experiment, we will uh, revise and as we discussed previously that if this is a human body, for example, and this is the intracellular fluid compartment and this one is the extracellular fluid compartment, we see that in this normal patient, this normal patient, there is around 28 liters of fluid present inside the cells. In all the cells combined, the, the fluid present in the intracellular compartment is 28 liters or around 40% of the body mass. The osmolarities, the osmolarity of the body, the osmolarity of the body fluids in the intracellular compartment is around 280 milliosmol per liter. So the total osmolarity of the intracellular cellular compartment is basically 28 into 280 which is 7840 milliosmol. So, the normal intracellular fluid compartment is 28 liters, the osmolarity of the whole compartment is 2 liters and if we calculate the total number of osmoles, they turn out to be 7840 which is basically the product of 28 into 280. 280 is basically, basically the number of milliosmoles per liter. Now, if we talk about the extracellular fluid compartment, we see that in the extracellular fluid compartment there are 14 liters of fluid. The, the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid is also 280 milliosmol per liter and 20, 14 into 28 is 3920 milliosmol. This is basically the total osmolarity, the total number of osmoles or total number of milliosmoles in the extracellular fluid compartment. So, to revise it again, in the normal human body, in the intracellular fluid compartment, 28 liters fluid is present, osmolarity is 280 and the total number of osmoles in the intracellular compartment are 7840. In the extracellular fluid compartment, which is basically the product, which is basically the combination of plasma and interstitial fluid, plasma and interstitial fluid, a total of 14 liters fluid is present, osmolarity is 280, just like the intracellular fluid compartment, and the total number of milliosmoles are 3920. If we combine these total fluids, total osmolarity, and total number of milliosmoles, we will have a total of 42 liters of fluid in the human body. And the osmolarity of the normal human body is around 280 milliosmoles per liter. And 42 into 280 is around 11,760 milliosmoles. The total number of osmoles basically. 280 milliosmoles per liter into 42 is the total number of milliosmoles present in the whole body. 7,800 in the intracellular, 3,920 in the extracellular fluid and total of 11,000 in the 42 liters combined fluid. Now what we, uh, what we do is to infuse, to infuse hypertonic saline in this patient. And now, this is basically a normal uh, person with a normal functioning uh, kidney, normal heart and uh, absolutely a normal physiology. So, we try to infuse the hypertonic saline which is basically any, any saline, any solution with osmolarity more than 0.9 is basically hypertonic saline. This saline is basically 3% NaCl and its volume is 2 liters. Now, we see here that we basically when we infuse this hypertonic saline into this subject, experimental subject or the patient, Initially, in the initial few minutes, this whole 2 liters of fluid, this 2 liters of fluid, it will initially be in the extracellular compartment. The orange color is basically the fluid and the black color dots basically represent the sodium and chloride. Initially, this fluid will be in the extracellular compartment and it will not be entering the intracellular compartment. If we try to analyze that what is the meaning of basically 3 percent sodium chloride, 2 liters of 3 percent sodium chloride, it simply means that this fluid has around 3 grams of sodium chloride per 100 ml. This has, this fluid has around 3 grams of sodium chloride per 100 ml of fluid or there are around 30 grams of sodium chloride per liter. So, 3 percent means 3 grams, 3 grams per 100 ml or 30 grams per thousand or per 1 liter. Now, first of all, we will calculate we will calculate the osmolarity of this 3% solution. The purpose of this experiment is to calculate the fluid shift and osmolarities. The purpose, is, the purpose is to calculate fluid shifts and osmolarities after the infusion. What will happen, what will happen to the fluid compartments if we inject, if we infuse a hypertonic saline? So, before infusing this fluid, we must know the amount of osmoles, the, the, the amount of the volume of the fluid and the osmolarity of the fluid and the number of milliosmoles that we are going to inject in the patient. So, 
is we are going to in infuse this patient into the extracellular fluid compartment into the plasma. So uh, we discussed that this yellow color is basically the extracellular fluid compartment, which is basically composed of plasma and interstitial fluid. And when we inject anything through veins, suppose for example, this is a vein and we infuse any fluid, this is basically going into the extracellular fluid compartment. It is not directly going into the intracellular compartment initially for the initial few minutes. So it remains in the extracellular fluid compartment in the initial few minutes. Now, we are going to calculate the number of milli or smoles in this fluid. So there are around 33 grams of fluid per 100 ml, 30 grams per liter. Now the molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5 gram. 58.5 gram. Now this is something which we have discussed previously. We discussed previously in this lecture that the molecular weight of glucose is 180 gram. The molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.4 gram. The molecular weight of uh, sodium sulfate is 142 gram. And it simply means the amount of any substance which contains 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 particles is basically the molecular weight. So 180 gram of glucose will contain this much particles, 58.4 gram of sodium chloride will contain this much particles and 142.04 uh, gram of sodium sulfate will contain this much particles which is basically the Avogadro's number. Now this is something which we have discussed in detail. We also discussed something that some of the uh, particles, some of the uh, uh, molecules they behave they, are mo they just have one particle and they have um, their one mole will have uh, or, uh, every molecule will just be having a one milli or small but sometimes some uh, some of the molecules they will split into two or three particles in case of sodium chloride every uh, molecule has two particles and they exert double milli or, uh, uh, or smaller pressure similarly in case of sodium sulfate every molecule is composed of three different particles and they exert triple or smaller or smaller pressure now this is also important as we now know that molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5 or 58.4 these uh, are basically average uh, numbers so if 58.5 gram of sodium chloride are present in one mole in one mole then 0.513 mole of sodium chloride are present in one liter 0.513 mole of sodium chloride are present in one liter for for three percent for three percent or for three gram per 100 ml or for 30 gram per liter 0.513 mole of sodium chloride are present per liter you see one molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5 so normally normally one mole of sodium chloride should contain 58.5 gram per mole as we discussed glucose one mole should be 180 and sodium sulfate should be 142 similarly sodium chloride one mole should contain 58.5 so 30 grams per liter are basically 0 0.5 mole per liter if one mole contains almost 60 so 30 are around half mole so this is around half mole per liter so basically 30 grams per liter are 0 0.513 mole of sodium chloride per liter this is basically the molarity now this is something which we have discussed in detail previously you should watch the previous lectures now we know that we have two liters of three percent sodium chloride so we multiply this number with two we get this much moles we get 1.026 moles of sodium chloride in two liters because we are using two liters so we multiply this number by two because here we have 0 0.513 per liter per one liter as we are having two liters so we multiply this by two and we get this number now now we know that every molecule of sodium chloride has double osmolarity as we discussed here. Glucose one particle has single osmolarity, sodium chloride has double osmolarity, sodium sulfate has triple osmolarity. So in case of sodium chloride, we have its osmolarity double. So we multiply this by 2, we multiply this number by 2 and then to get the milliosmoles instead of osmoles, we multiply it by 1000. Initially, uh, we multiply this by 2, this this number, with this multiply this with 2. And then we get an answer and then we multiply the answer with 1000 to get the number of milliosmol because there are 1000 milliosmol in one osmol. So here we are not talking about osmoles. We are talking about milliosmoles. So we uh, to try, uh, we are basically trying to calculate the number of milliosmoles that are present in 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride solution. So our answer is that there are around 2051 milliosmoles. 2051 milliosmoles present in 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride solution. We have found this. How we calculated this through this uh, through this equation and uh, through equation which we previously discussed. So finally, we now know that there are around 2051 milliosmoles present in this solution. And with the help of this the, this number, we are now going to see what happens when we infuse this fluid, um, this fluid into the body. Now see. As soon as we infuse this 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride solution into the body, initially it is present in the extracellular fluid compartment. And what happens is that this, this extracellular fluid compartment, it becomes 16 liters. It becomes 16 liters instead of 14 liters. And the, to the, the, the total number of osmoles, it becomes 5,971. 
instead of 3920 because we have added this 2500 further or more milli or small into the extracellular fluid compartment so initially there is increase only in the extracellular fluid compartment and the extracellular fluid compartment volume increases from 14 to 16 and the milli or small the total number of milli or smalls increases from 3920 to 5971 after infusion of this much milli or smalls into the extracellular fluid compartment now to calculate the osmolarity of this compartment, we divide 5,971, 5,971 by this 300, um, uh, by 16, sorry, 5,971 five, by 16 is 373. So the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid compartment increases from 280 to 373 milliosmoles per liter. So that's it. We have calculated this. If you talk about the intracellular fluid compartment, it is still 28 liters. The osmolarity is still 280, and the number of the number of milliosmoles in the intracellular fluid compartment is still the same 7840. But if you talk about the combined fluid volume, and if you talk about the combined osmolarity, we see that here the total fluid volume was 42 liters. Here the total fluid volume was 42 liters. 28 plus 14. Here the total volume has increased to 44 liters because 28 plus 16 instead of 14. Instead of 14, we now have 16 liters. Similarly. The total number of osmoles, the total number of milli osmoles now have increased from 11,760, which was the combination of, which was basically the combination of 7840 plus 3920, the milli osmoles present in intracellular plus the milli osmoles present in the extracellular fluid compartment. Now, as we have increased the milli osmoles in extracellular fluid compartment, and when we combine the the intracellular plus the extracellular, we have the total milli osmoles of 13,811 milli osmoles. The total milliosmoles now are 13,811 instead of this 11,760. To calculate now, now to calculate the, the osmolarity, initially, initially this, um, this fluid, initially this uh, fluid will remain in the extracellular fluid compartment. So the osmolarity of this compartment has changed, but the osmolarity of this compartment has not changed, but at least it has now contributed this fluid this fluid has contributed to the total this fluid has contributed to the total so the total has at least changed now after a few minutes after some time this fluid has basically uh, totally diluted into the intracellular and extracellular fluid compartment but we see we see that what happens is that the sodium and chloride present in this 3% saline solution, it could not pass this membrane. It could not enter inside the cells and it remains in the extracellular fluid compartment. You see, the black dots are basically the sodium and chloride particles which remain stuck in the extracellular fluid compartment while the orange color fluid, it has basically distributed itself in the intracellular and extracellular fluid compartment. So this basically, this membrane, this membrane which is basically present, this which is the cell membrane, it is basically a semi-permeable membrane. It is allowing the water to move in and out but it is not allowing the fluid particles to move from one compartment to the other compartment. And we have assumed, we have assumed that the particles are not crossing initially. The particles present in one compartment are not crossing over because they are present here and that they are not crossing over into the other compartment. So what is the final shift of the fluid after infusing this saline? Now it has compute completely distributed. But one difference is that the sodium chloride could not pass or it could, it could not uh, basically... Uh, go to in, inside the cell but fluid would distribute itself so we now have the final values we now have the final values what has happened after infusion of this hypertonic saline and now we calculate the combined osmolarity of this intracellular fluid compartment and this extracellular fluid compartment after some time after some time after some time is the total osmolarity as the total osmolarity or the total milli osmoles of the extra intracellular and the extracellular fluid compartment is 13 1811 or 13811 and the total fluid volume is 48 44 liters 28 plus 16 so the tot so the osmolarity of the fluid now is total osmoles divided by total fluid is 313.9 milli osmoles per liter initially the osmolarity was 280 the intracellular compartment also had 280 milli osmoles per liter and the extracellular fluid compartment also had 280 milli osmoles per liter but after infusing 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride solution and allowing time for this fluid to properly distribute into the extracellular and the intracellular fluid, we now have this osmolarity of the total fluid, both the intra and extracellular fluid is 313.9 milliosmoles per liter instead of 280 uh, milliosmoles per liter. And the osmolarity, the total number of osmoles in the extracellular fluid now are 5971 here, 5971 instead of 3920. Similarly, the total number of osmoles in the intracellular compartment are the same because 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 the there was no movement the osmolarity has changed the osmolarity has changed because some fluid some water moved from this side towards this side 
but the total number of osmoles remains the same so because the osmoles remains the same so the osmolarity the concentration has increased the concentration here was 280 but the concentration here is 313.9 now we have all these values so we can calculate the fluid shift to calculate the fluid we divide the number of milli osmoles the total number of milli osmoles in the intracellular compartment by the osmolarity and we have 24.98 liters as we have the total osmolarity the total number of milli osmoles in the intracellular com compartment and the osmolarity so total number of osmoles divided by the osmolarity gives us the fluid volume so the fluid volume from 28 liters in the intracellular compartment has decreased to 24.98 liters 24.98 liters while the the fluid volume of the intracellular compartment now is total number of milli osmoles total number of milli osmoles divided by the osmolarity osmolarity of the extracellular fluid compartment gives us a total number of 19.02 liters so the volume of the extracellular fluid compartment has increased the volume of the extracellular fluid compartment has increased while the volume of this intracellular fluid compartment has decreased here the volume was 28 liters here the volume is 24.98 liters so this fluid compartment has decreased but is the number of milli osmoles the total number of milli osmoles remain the same because we have assumed that there is no movement of sodium and chloride the number of milli osmoles remains the same only water has moved there so the total concentration has increased and the osmolarity of this compartment has increased similarly after infusing only 2 liters of fluid in the extracellular fluid compartment only 2 liters of extra fluid into the extracellular fluid compartment there is an increase of around there is an increase of around uh around 5 liters around 5 liters initially we had 14 liters now we have 19.02 liters so there is an increase of around 5 liters of fluid 5 liters of fluid in the extracellular fluid compartment after infusing only this 2 liters of fluid now let's uh, revise our previous uh, lectures in which we discussed that after infusing the hypertonic saline after infusing the hypertonic saline there is a decrease in the there is a decrease in the intracellular fluid compartment there is a decrease in the intracellular fluid compartment and there is an increase in the intracellular fluid compartment and the osmolarities of both the intracellular fluid compartment and the extracellular fluid compartment both increases if we infuse isotonic fluid isotonic uh, and saline solution isotonic saline there is only increase in the extracellular fluid compartment there is no change if we infuse hypotonic saline there is a decrease in the osmolarity there is increase in the intracellular fluid compartment there is increase in the extracellular fluid compartment but here we are talking about the infusion of hypertonic saline so after hypertonic saline so after infusing the hypertonic saline solution we see that there is a decrease in the intracellular fluid compartment and there is increase in the extracellular fluid compartment and the osmolarities of both the compartment the extracellular and the intracellular compartment basically increases so this is basically the end result and this is this is basically the experimental proof of the fluid shifts the changes in the fluid compartments and the changes in the osmolarities after infusing the hypertonic saline same rules apply to all these um, experiments if we do this experiment for isotonic saline if we do this experiment for hypertonic saline or if we do this hypertonic saline on 4% or 5% or any amount of saline we will get the result with this experiment with this experiment by calculating the different amount of uh, uh, osmolarities and the volumes we have finally proved that by infusing 2 liters of 3% sodium chloride solution into the body into the extracellular fluid compartment there is basically a rise of 5 liters of fluid in the extracellular fluid compartment just by infusing 2 liters there is increase of 5 liters fluid increase in the extracellular fluid compartment and there is a decrease of 4 liters there is a decrease of 4 liters or around 4 liters fluid in the intracellular fluid compartment similarly there is increase in the osmolarity of both the intracellular fluid compartment and the extracellular fluid compartment if you compare it but in the initial few minutes in the initial as soon as this infusion is done this fluid will be present only in the extracellular fluid compartment and only after passage of some time this fluid will basically distribute itself in such a way that the fluid the water compart will uh, distribute itself evenly but the sodium chloride will remain uh, outside the membrane and they will not be uh, moving and we have assumed that there is no loss of any osmoles so that's all about the calculation of fluid shift and osmolarities after infusion of hypertonic saline thanks a lot for watching the video